All right. So last time we were talking about polymer synthesis, and uh, we had gotten through two different uh, common methods of po polymer synthesis that shared a lot of similar aspects. Uh, first is the, what's called an addition reaction. We start with some initiator, usually a radical initiator. So this is a peroxide, for example, that has a weak bond that falls apart into half a bond, basically. And, um, and now this uh, radical is looking around for a way to get an electron. And anything that has a double bond is a likely target. So what can happen is, is that this d double bond can flip out like that, creating a nice bond between the initiator and this carbon. But of course, this carbon is uh, left out, right? And so it ends up being a radical. And of course, this can keep on going. And in this case, since I'm uh, starting with propylene, right? Three carbons and one double bond, I end up with polypropylene. In an anionic polymerization, our initiator is a base. Like, and, um, and this can be, generally these are pretty strong bases like lithium, butyl lithium. And, um, and in fact, butyl lithium is what's used in uh, reacting with uh, styrene. So this is styrene, one double bond. And on this carbon is a benzene ring attached to it. And uh, what happens here is uh, this, uh, this carbon uh, is susceptible to this attack by, the, by a base. It donates an electron to this carbon. And then, of course, that leaves this carbon with the extra electron. And now it's a base, and it can react with styrene. And that's how you make polystyrene. I'll say more about that in a second. And the last one we're going to talk about is what's called condensation. And we mentioned this just a little bit at the end when we talked about RTV. Condensation, or in your reading, they sometimes call it stepwise. Um, because condensation technically has to do with water, but you can produce alcohol or water or, or any number of things. Uh, but in the case I'm going to uh, describe here, this is terephthalic. These are two E's, even though it doesn't look like it. Terephthalic acid is this. It's a dibasic acid. It's got a benzene ring in the middle. And what I mean by dibasic acid is it has two carboxylic acid groups on it. And in a condensation reaction, what's done is you take an acid group or an an ester group and react it with an alcohol. And the alcohol has to be difunctional in order for this to produce a, a, um, a polymer. That, what do I mean by difunctional? Well, it's got two alcohol groups on it. And this one here is the simplest of all, is ethylene glycol. So what happens is, is terephthalic acid, when uh, heated with ethylene glycol, shown here. So when I heat it, it's usually, um, I put a delta there. That means heat. And uh, if I put it under conditions where I extract water, like I heat it in a pot with a condenser on top and take the water away, what happens is, is that this, this alcohol group reacts with this acid and basically splits out water. See that hydrogen and these, this hydroxyl will produce water. And what you're left with is an ester. Remember from our organic chemistry lecture? So the, uh, and, and uh, in addition, what you're left with is an acid and an alcohol on the combined molecule. And of course, that means this can continue reacting with either ethylene glycol on this end or terephthalic acid on that end. And that's when you do that, you, 
you get polyethylene terephthalate, or PET, as the polymer. Very common polymer. Probably recognize this if you've, if you've done any, any recycling. And I'll show you some properties of that polymer in a moment. Oh, I should say uh, that this is an example. Of course, I'll just get these repeat ester groups. This is, of course, a polyester. And there's many, many types. Nylon 6-6 six, six is an example of, and you have to see that in your reading. It's, it's a, uh, an example of another. Oh, well, it's actually nylon 6-6 six, six is a polyamide. Maybe I'll just do it here. It's, very, it's a very similar type situation. The monomer, whoops, is um, six, um, six amino hexanoic acid. So let's just do it. So it's hexanoic acid. So it's got six carbons. One, two, three, four. Oops. What am I doing here? One, two, three, four, five, six. But it's six aminos. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means it has to have an amine group on this one. And then, of course, two other hydrogens to get the four bonds. So that's uh, the starting material for nylon. But I have this amine group. So here's I have an acid and an amine group. So what that does is the amine group on one molecule reacts with an acid. So this is one molecule here, is another molecule here. And what this does is it takes one of these hydrogens, maybe I'll put this here and this here, and splits out water again. So here's another condensation reaction. It's called condensation because in the condenser above, when I'm heating this pot, I see droplets of water being formed because I'm just extracting water. And of course, what that does, it produces an amide as opposed to a polyester. And so this is a polyamide. Both of these are produced by condensation reactions. And they make use of these sort of dye functionality of these <coughs> molecules. One end can react with the other. And of course, it's easier for it to react with a neighboring molecule than to actually loop around and do that. In fact, it's almost impossible for it to do. It. So it's the, this amine group on one, so I've written it here, and the acid. So have, I've just drawn this end of one molecule here and this end of, of one molecule here. So when I heat it up, I can just have this nitrogen react with that carbon and split out the water and you end up with a amide. But it's the same basic idea. Instead of an alcohol, it's an amine. So this is nylon. Uh, 